Chase Jarvis writes in his book Creative Calling that creativity is the process of learning to trust oneself. One could say that our self-doubt derives from our distrust in ourselves. Susan Hiller once said in an interview that when she was a young artist, she had both incredible confidence and total lack of confidence. And that lack of confidence, according to her, came from not knowing whether this would work out. Yet, she also said, and I quote, and yet I so enjoyed doing what I wanted to do and the level of pleasure was so extreme it overcame fear. The truth is that we will always have moments when we doubt this artistic path that we've chosen or any path for the matter of fact. That's just the way it is. So how do we befriend our self-doubt? How do we learn to walk this artistic or any other path with self-doubt right beside us? I think the answer lies somewhere between committing to what gives us pleasure and then through that learning to trust in our magic. Eight of stones in the gentle tarot, which is eight of pentacles in the traditional deck, says that too often we deny ourselves what gives us pleasure. Maybe we're stuck in a comparison loop. We look at the artists that are way ahead of us and compare our beginning to their middle. What's the point, we say? I'll never be as skillful, we say. Maybe our past rejections are telling us that this is no different, that our art will be rejected yet again. The words of one of my photography tutors comes to mind. It was my final year review and my photography tutor suggested me to settle down, get a veggie garden and make babies. (laughs) To put a little bit more of a context around it, I should say that I was what they refer to as a mature student. Granted, I never pursued a photography career. But that comment by that tutor definitely left a dent. And in my darkest moments, I also feel like a quitter. (laughs) The amount of projects I've started and never finished is miles long. So why would this idea of being an artist be any different? What makes this time different? Why should I commit to this? Can I even commit to it wholeheartedly? All those fears and those doubts just flood in all at the same time. But then I'm reminded of how much joy making things brings me. Creating lights me up. Even on the days when I feel like I've made some crappy art. (laughs) As a side note, this cloud stippling is sure part of that crappy art repertoire but I know that I can come back tomorrow and start again. Build on the previous sketch, learn from my mistakes, hopefully, and bit by bit get better at it. The journey to getting to a place where I do trust my magic 100% has been long and winding. I've tried so many different things, had so many odd jobs that I know did not fulfill me in a way creating does. It was through inner explorations that I finally realized what mattered to me. And I know this whole finding your purpose thing is so cliche, 
but it did allow me to start exploring how I want to spend my time and what I actually want to dedicate my time and energy to. If there's any advice in here somewhere for anyone who struggles with self-doubt, get clear on your intentions. Know your deep-rooted why behind this desire to become an artist or a writer or whatever your heart's desire. To explore your inner landscapes through whichever medium calls for you. Befriend your self-doubt through learning to trust yourself and your magic. The more we know what lights us up, the less we allow our doubts and our fears to run our lives. And when we stray off course, which we inevitably will do, we can come back to the tools that allow us to reignite our flames. Um, that one like I've got in the car is good, where it's a button and it just brings it open. Like, how are you supposed to work with this thing. <laughs> I've, been with this thing. I've been working with this thing for like two hours now.